As you know, the Arduino IDE uses a software project called Wiring, which hides the nitty gritty aspects of microcontroller programming and offers a collection of easy to use software functions for GPIO control, software timers, serial communications and heaps more. These are all part of the core Arduino libraries and are built into the IDE. However, as with most programming environments and languages, Arduino allows you to use pre-existing chunks of code called libraries to make different software applications easier to work with. So what is a library? Well, a library is a collection of code which is designed to integrate with the specific platform that you're working with. It's designed to perform a certain purpose, such as controlling a type of sensor or making serial communications easier. It provides a set of functions which you can use in your program and the functions take care of the heavy lifting and complex code, allowing you to continue writing your program without getting bogged down in data sheets and numbers. We used a library in the previous chapter to integrate the non-volatile EEPROM with a simple project to retain data after power cycles. We'll use the Arduino Wire library and SPI library further on in this chapter, which allows easy control of the I2C and SPI interfaces. If you want to send some data on it, you could spend days or even weeks trying to understand the data sheet. Or you could use the Wire library, which provides a function called Write with Data, which takes care of all of it for you. Without the library, if you called write and gave it some sort of uh, parameter, it would give you an error. However, when you include the library with your sketch, then calling that function, write for example, runs a number of lines of code in the library to carry out that request, and the function is passed the data that you wish to send. As with the built-in functionality of Arduino, the IDE comes bundled with a collection of libraries which are community tested and used in thousands of projects around the world. Makers, DIYers, and developers can also release their own libraries for Arduino, which you can download and use in your sketch in the same way. Including libraries in your code is easy. You simply go to Sketch, Include Library, and then you select the library that you wish to include. Now, if you're interested in more info, www.arduino.cc forward slash en forward slash reference, and I'll provide a link in the workshop content, is the place to go to learn how to use the libraries and also more about the built-in functions of the Arduino IDE. You can find out what functions are available for different libraries, the syntax they use, and the required data types. Third-party libraries should also contain a documentation page, which has examples and information. You also can add external libraries to your IDE by choosing the add.zip library option. In the sketch menu, you can see it there. Include library, add.zip library. And that takes a simple zip file and adds it to the library collection of your IDE. Most libraries consist of two main files, which are the .h and .cpp files. The .h file is also known as the header file and acts as a bridge between the code in the .cpp file and the rest of your sketch. Some libraries, however, don't come in a handy zip format and instead just give you that .h and the .cpp files and perhaps some examples. Adding libraries in this format is still really easy. You just get the whole folder, which contains all of the library files, and copy it into your Arduino user libraries folder. By default, this libraries folder is located in the same folder where you save your sketches. So now that we know a bit about what libraries are and how to use them, let's take a look at some examples in the Arduino IDE. So let's say that you wanted to add a library here. I've got, I've got a library here, which is for using the SN3218 PWM expander, which is a really handy chip. Unfortunately, there's already a library provided for it. It uses the I2C interface, but there's a specific procedure and method that you have to follow in order to uh, communicate correctly with the chip. So if we take this library here and go into documents, Arduino, libraries, and copy it in there. Now, when we close the IDE, and open it back up, we'll see it appear in our libraries folder. So now if you go to sketch, include library, you can see down the bottom here, the name of the library that we should include. And you can change the name of the folder, and everything you like, that's not a problem. And then if we click on this, it'll come up with hash include sn3218.h 
and sn3218 underscore software underscore wire dot h. And that allows it to be used with both the hardware I squared C port and a soft I squared C port, which is really cool. So every time you add a, add a library, it's going to come up with the hash include and then the library name. So that's how you can add libraries. Now we mentioned uh, that the Arduino comes with a bunch of built in libraries. So if we go to sketch, include library, you can see some of those here. So for example, if we wish to use the, a liquid crystal display, a character LCD, uh, to display some information, then it's just as easy as going liquid crystal, and then it'll come up with the info there, and then it's easy enough to create an object called LCD, and you can use a bunch of different functions specific to that library. And as we said before, the best way to find out how to use a library is to go to the documentation page. If it's an Arduino library, it'll have heaps of references and examples for you to follow. And if it's an, a user uh, contributed library, then it should have a good documentation page with some examples so you can work out all the different functions, uh, the parameters that they require and how they work. So now let's take a look at some examples in the next sections.